from the Sky News Centre, this is Paul Murray Live. Thank you, boys. We love you very much. More of the readings of the Bard of Trump on Outsiders on Thursday night. Welcome to the show. So much to fire up about, so let's get straight into it. You know the term shoot the messenger? Well, that is exactly what they were trying to do in lefty parts of Melbourne today. Because, you see, African gangs aren't the problem. It's the media who talk about African gangs. Apparently, the media is to blame for 100 kids, some with their school bags, turning up at a basketball court and fighting over a girl. Apparently, it is the media who are to blame for the people who lived around that basketball court to be told that they had to stay inside. Apparently, it was the media's fault that the crowd was so violent that police thought it was better to leave than arrest anyone who was involved in the violence. Today, we had not just a South Sudanese leader, but politicians willing to bend over and say, well, more than are, this is what they were willing to say today about the real problem of Sudanese gangs, African gangs, in Melbourne. This uh, racist fear-mongering must, uh, must be stopped. It is harmful to everyone in our communities and makes those who bring such creativity, determination and talent to our cities feel unwelcome simply because they are Australian Sudanese. We stand firmly by the South Sudanese community and we know that racism is divisive, destructive and threatens the very fabric of our society. We call on the federal government in particular, members of the federal government and members of the media, to deal with facts and to drop the fear-mongering and the cowardly antics that have been employed uh, in this climate. So could these lefty mayors... Please tell me why even Daniel Andrews now calls them African gangs. Why the Victorian police, who used to not give any ethnic description about the people responsible for the crime, now has a task force to go after African gangs. Now, you need to learn a lesson. And it's the same lesson that the Catholic Church seems to have learnt in the past few decades. We all know the difference between a priest and a pedophile priest. And just because you say pedophile priest does not mean you are saying all priests are pedophiles. In the same way, radical Islam is different than Islam. The idea that anyone who believes in Islam is automatically a terrorist, again, not true. So to all of the law-abiding good members of the South Sudanese community who live in the northwest of Melbourne, welcome. For those who are not kicking their kids in the backside and teaching them that in this country we don't carry on, like maybe, potentially, previous generations in another country may have acted lawlessly, you are failing in the integration of your kids and this country. That's it. And if you can't tell the difference between calling out the kids when they are breaking windows of police cars and the Nothing to See Here Brigade, then I'm sorry, you are part of the problem. Malcolm Turnbull, as we speak, is behind closed doors with Liberal MPs trying to convince them to cut off their own arms. That is, of course, him trying to say, you must back in the National Energy Guarantee, this magical mystery tour that will simultaneously make sure that we bow down to Paris when it comes to emissions, simultaneously cut power prices and also guarantee that energy supply remains exactly as effective as it has been for the past few decades when, you know, coal was the option. Now, yes, economic modelling does suggest that potentially there could be an absolute maximum saving to some families of $500. But there's a bloody big asterisk next to it. And here's the asterisk. That's not for everyone, and that might be over 10 years. There's an election due early next year, even if they try to hold the damn thing off in the back half of next year. Anyone who gets a power bill between now and then will notice it costs more than it did last month, last quarter, last year. Goodbye, Malcolm Turnbull. Now, there are those that are trying to say, let's not do this. But, of course, those people aren't in the cool seats. They're the bad kids. So you got this today from now Malcolm Turnbull. This is right up there with the stupidity of when he said that there was no place in the parliament for Pauline Hanson and then she not only got herself elected but another senator from Queensland and another one in New South Wales and another one in Western Australia. Who does this bloke think is the idiot? Have a look. Uh, independent assessment of the Energy Security Board 
the almost uh, unanimous views of industry groups and business leaders around the country, all of whom support the National Energy Guarantee as a means of ensuring that we will have more affordable energy. The Honourable Member knows very well what happens when you are now allow ideology and idiocy to take charge of energy policy. Yeah, if you're somebody who believes that we should keep using the technology that burns the stuff that we dig up, put on ships and send to the rest of the world, that's idiocy. If you believe that maybe while China and the United States are able to continue polluting all the way until 2030, that if you think that's idiocy, well, you're on the wrong side of the Prime Minister. Will it pass the party room? You betcha. Why? I have no idea. As if to prove my point, the latest news poll came out today and Malcolm Turnbull, after saying Tony Abbott had to cop two in the back of the head at 30 news polls, he is now at 38 news polls. That is a collective, let's all do it together, 68 losing news polls for the Coalition. For a very long time, they have been underwater, sometimes way underwater and occasionally they get a little bit close. But again, the headline figure remains exactly the same, as it has for Malcolm Turnbull for the 38th time. Two-party preferred, 51-49, would easily see Labor win the next election. But more importantly, the reason why they will be able to do that is because the primary vote of the Liberal Party is in the toilet. Unless they have a four in front of their name, they can't even finish dead even. Now, Labor's not doing incredibly better, but remember, they get basically everything when it comes to the Greens, and increasingly, they get, you know, a very sizeable chunk between a third and almost a half of One Nation preferences. That's what gets them to 50%. As for the Liberal Party... Well, they're about to cut their arms off. But it'll be OK. The press gallery will think they're making a wonderful decision. And finally, for those of you who just want to be noticed, um, get nude. Because that seems to work when it comes to the internet. This was a dude who decided to get naked and was washed by a car wash machine. <laughs> what I love most about this is that I don't know that it was a friend of his that was actually filming it. <laughs> Instead, somebody noticed, hang on, is that what I think it is? And remember, they didn't have the joy of blurring like we do here. <laughs> with that wonderful image in everyone's head, let's get to Liz Tilly now with the latest news in Brisbane. Liz, good luck oh. following that.